Hey everybody, it's Shelly Hoffman, and I'm actually sitting outside, and there's a reason. Because if you notice who's with me today, it's Steve D'Argangelo, who is the village engineer, who has done an amazing job for this village. Uh, whether he thinks he has or not, um, I definitely appreciate a lot of his projects. So, uh, Steve, I asked you to come on today because you are actually um, going to um, leave the village and go into the private sector. Can you tell us a little bit about what your... Um, what you've done here, your tenure, their projects, and we're sitting in Community Park because you did a lot here. Yeah, sure. Our, uh, well, thank you for the introduction. The Community Park has been a big emphasis here over the last couple of years because Community Park was an area that uh, I think Mayor Clark always called the uh, the uh, the unknown jewel of the village, and that a lot of people weren't familiar with it if they've been here before. They haven't been here recently. So uh, we've, we've done a few things here in the park that make it much more attractive. If you haven't been here recently, you may want to visit the park and, and see what it's about. But just as I was coming to work eight years ago, a new restroom was right over my shoulder here was built. It was a community development funded project. And uh, it's a very nice facility for the park here. And following that, we've done a number of other improvements. One is that over here in this direction here, we have a very nice pavilion. The pavilion is able to be used on a first come first served basis or even reserved through Village Hall. So if you call down and speak with Maureen Butler or Jody, they will uh, allow you to reserve the pavilion if you have an interest in having it for a particular day for an event. We've also put kayak launches into the park here, which have been very well received. They've been here about three years now and the kayak launches provide an opportunity for people to, uh, who like to kayak, but find, always found it difficult to access the water. Kayak launch is just such an easy way to uh, provide access into the water and to get out of the water from a kayak. And if, if you kayak before, or if you've had some interest, it's really the most difficult portion is to, you know, the, the getting in and getting out is difficult. The time you're in your kayak, you enjoy it. Some people avoid kayaking because of the difficulty of getting in and out. These are just, they're effortless. And uh, if you haven't tried one, you should. You should come and um, enjoy the opportunity that we have here for those who like to kayak. I will say, um, just to uh, emphasize your point, is I have friends who uh, often use the kayak launchers. They're in the water a lot more now because it is easier to get in and out. So yeah. I think that was great. They are great. And the park is, if, if you can see the park around us here, it's a very natural setting and it's not by just uh, chance. That's actually a design is to have this park remain with a very heavy tree canopy, very well uh, covered and have a more natural look to it. We have a, uh, a nature trail that was uh, constructed just a few years ago and it goes around the perimeter of the park mm -hmm. and it makes for an excellent walk because what you can do is uh, start up in the village and walk on a trail, a dedicated pedestrian trail that brings you down Meadow Street. And we have a bridge that goes over Crooked Brook that we installed just a, a year after I came to work here. And that bridge brings you over Crooked Brook and into the park. Now, if you were to walk that trail from uh, Meadow Street down uh, into the park and then around the perimeter trail and back to either to the village or possibly even your car that's parked in a parking lot that we've built, uh, at the trailhead. That's about a one and a half mile walk. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you that it's a very, very nice walk because it's a mix. You know, you're walking down Meadow Street, and you're kind of in a very, very uh, low density residential area, but then you come uh, on the east end here and it becomes less populated. Uh, you're along the river for much of it. And then you come into the park here and get on the perimeter trail. And it's a, it's a very, uh, very tree covered in the woods nature trail for for nearly the entire perimeter trail. So that's a nice walk. And we've done that here in the park, uh, in addition to just maintaining the park. So those are some projects that we've done recently. Here. I actually saw your um, one of your trucks is getting ready to cut the grass or doing some yard work, I think, around the yeah. park when I was pulling in. Yeah, the DPW is responsible for maintaining all of our parks here. We truly don't have what would be referred to as a parks department. We don't have any parks programming. But our highway department is responsible for maintaining our parks, and they do a terrific job. They do uh, just so nice of keeping our parks in, in good shape. And uh, whether you use them for some of the re recreational facilities, the swings, 
or the picnic tables or just a green space to come and sit for a period of time. Yeah. Uh, they're always maintained very nice. I think that was the biggest surprise when I first met you is how much the highway department's actually in charge of in the village, um, keeping keeping nice overall. It is the highway department. So the DPW consists of really a highway department and then a water sewer department. But uh, within that, both of those two groups uh, do stretch beyond that. Now, not mm -hmm. so much the water and sewer, because of the particular skill level that those employees have, they are more dedicated to maintaining our water uh, distribution system and our sewers. Highway department is very broad in that they do maintain our parks as well as all of the buildings that the village owns. And you might say, mm -hmm. well, what's that? Well, village hall, the police department, the highway garage, the water uh, department buildings. We, Shaksborough Museum is a village building that we take okay. care of. Canton Woods Senior Center, we maintain that building. So. There are a lot of buildings that we do maintenance on. Sometimes we contract that work out, but often that's being done by uh, people right here in the highway department. When you had mentioned uh, the water, and I know that there's, um, you know, one of the point of talking today is what you've done in your tenure here is, and you mentioned the water department. You've done quite a bit with the water department while you were here, correct? We have. Uh, the water department has been a reliable water, drinking water supply for the village uh, for many years, you know, mm -hmm. since the 1800s. It's, it's a very old water system. It's a community that has had public municipal water uh, since prior to 1880. And the reason that we know that is there's a plaque on the wall and Canton Street Plant talking about installing that well in 1886. So uh, we know that that far back water has been uh, a public service to the residents here in the village. And we've looked to maintain that. But it just doesn't happen. You know, you need to, we have water wells and we have uh, water storage tanks and a distribution yeah. system. Well, we've done a lot to try to modernize that and to continue to have a future in providing water to the village and uh, really modernization of some of the plants and some uh, upkeep and maintenance of the buildings has been a part of that over the time. Can you give some specific details? Of well, one of the things done? is that we have this very unique well. Uh, the Canton Street well is, is quite unique in that it's... Um, a large diameter, but more of a shallow well. It's a 20 foot diameter well that's only 20 foot deep. It provides excellent water to our village. It's a great water source. So the quantity is good and it's very good quality water. But a number of years ago, prior to my coming here, just, just prior to that, I was aware of a very similar well in the city of Fulton collapsing. And mm -hmm. when we, when I came to work here, I talked to Chuck McAuliffe about it and the board. And we looked at what is the possibility of a collapse on our well? Well, it's, it's, it's over a hundred years old. So uh, would it you know, be at risk? And we did some preliminary investigation to say that it's certainly aging. And um, we designed a plan to come up and to line that well. And we, we purchased a, uh, an 18 foot diameter steel sleeve basically, which was dropped into the well and a concrete, uh, Concrete was poured in the interstitial space between the old liner and the new, and we ended up with a new, very secure uh, well that will serve us long into the future. Nice. Yeah. Um, so we are going to go uh, to a couple more locations. Is there anything else about Community Park where we're sitting right now that um, you know that was either a special project to you or something you enjoyed, or you know the public that you haven't mentioned yet? Well, one thing that we will mention about community park is that we do love the tree cover and the can't be, but unfortunately, and some people may be aware of the emerald ash borer, we yeah. have an awful lot of ash trees here in the park. And unfortunately, we're going to lose those trees. So mm -hmm. I think you might see in the next few years, uh, even in my absence, I've talked to the board about it and the need for removing the ash trees as they die off in the park, but then a, a planting program to bring new mm -hmm. trees in and to continue have what is just this beautiful canopy of tree cover that we have here in the park. So that's something that's going on here in the park. And um, whether or not we uh, develop some other elements in the park, there's been talk of the possibility of some sort of a dog park or a dog run, a oh, fenced nice. in area or an, an area that is somehow dedicated to allowing people to run their dogs off leash. Uh, so that's something that's been thought about. Um, no action has been taken on it, but that's something that you might see down the road and maybe some improved access to the waterfront, uh, maybe an opportunity for boating access. There's no docking here right now per se. There is the boat launch, but uh, nothing intended for any uh, short or long-term docking. So that those are things that might happen down the road. That would be nice. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, I'm gonna um, say we part ways for 
probably just a few minutes and we will be back live. But we're going to start up over at uh, Mercer Park, which is one of my favorite parks because that's where the big chill is. That's where, um, you know, Rotary does stuff, which most people know. But this is the first time, I'll be honest, Steve, that I've sat in Community Park, uh, also called Lions Park by some people, which I didn't know. I thought they were two separate things. Uh, this is beautiful. If people aren't utilizing this park, um, they really need to check it out. It's it's really nice. It is nice. And it is nice to mention the Lions and why the name the Lions, because the Lions Club is very closely associated with this park. And through many years and even now, continue to be supporters of activities in the park. And they themselves, the Lions, uh, volunteer and do a number of things. There are benches here that have been built and put in by the Lions. So the Lions are a big part of keeping this park. Uh, going and, and and this is the park where the new swing is going correct we are talking about a new swing that would provide um, the ability for those with disabilities to have access to play apparatus that's difficult for them today yeah. to, to participate nice. in yeah. so, all right well stay tuned we will be back in a few minutes at a different park